Welcome everyone to the Side Draft Podcast. This past weekend, the Xfinity Series went to ISM Raceway, which was reconfigurated, had the start-finish line moved down after what is now turn four, I believe. Yep. It is really odd trying to you know get used to the new configuration, and we saw that on restarts. They weren't too uh, crazy like I thought they'd be, but... Uh, we definitely had some interesting restarts. Yeah, some people would dive down on the apron and some try to go to the high side, so it's pretty interesting. John Hunter Nemechek would win the pole, and that would be his first pole of the Xfinity Series, so congratulations to him on that. Uh, then, uh, you know, the past three weekends, we've, or the past two weekends, we've had issues on lap one. That would be the same for this weekend. Uh, The 66 of Ogata would spin on the first lap, causing a caution. Uh, Restart with John Hunter Nemechek and Custer. And let's not forget, Christopher Bell would have to start from the very tail end of the field because he did not pass inspection, could not qualify, and that would hamper his day trying to get to the front. But uh, he had one awesome car. Yeah, one good good thing for him, everybody started on the tires that they qualify with and he had less laps on his tires because he was bit uh, in the inspection line. Algar would get a great restart. He would take the lead and uh, Elliot Sadler would make some contact with somebody. He had a major tire rub. Smoke was just coming out like every turn. Uh, thankfully for him, he would survived to the end of that stage with Algar winning the stage. Algar trying to point his way in. He was right there. He just didn't need Christopher Bell winning this race, which he ended up doing. And yeah, that really pretty much put Sauer out of it at that point. Uh, he really couldn't be, be real competitive. I mean, he, he survived the race, but uh, he really couldn't gain any points on anybody else. Austin Cindric would lead off pit road. Matt Tift would have a speeding penalty, while Brandon Jones would also have some issues there. Elliot Sadler would have to make multiple stops trying to fix the issue, and it's not something you want when you need to have a great finish and try to stay alive in the playoffs. Yeah, really, it comes down to the cutoff race here, and it's like, you know, you need some people to step up, and it seems like you can't really see a whole lot of them step up, but a lot of them had issues, so... Algar would take the lead on the restart, would have a great battle for like third, I believe, between the 22, the 42, and the 20. Some bumping and banging with the 22 and the 20. Uh, They both were quite angry with each other, uh, but, you know, Miami's on the line at this point, so it's it's just racing. I'm pretty sure, you know, any whining that went on the radio from either side, uh, they understood later on that, you know, it's just racing trying to get to Miami. Yeah, I believe it's... 22 and the 20 had a better car than, than John Hunter Nemechek did, but it just really couldn't make the pass and get around him. And Justin Algar would win stage two, so this race is going over in heartbeat. Just, you know, not much action really on the track. Uh, but we saw in stage three some cautions started happening. Uh, but pit stops with John Hunter Nemechek, he would lead off pit road while Christopher Bell is in second. John Hunter Nemechek would lead on the restart. And then the 66 of Ogata would spin once again. No caution, though. Bell would end up taking the lead from John Hunter. John Hunter just seemed to be really loose. Uh, caution for the 13 of Tyler Hill as he would spin in front of the third-place cars. Uh, I believe Justin Algar was one of those. Yeah, he did get a little bit of damage from the, uh, the 42. Yeah, he slept spun around. I think the 22... Almost spun him, and yeah. but uh, yeah, the 42 just got real loose and spun, and unfortunately, all guys right there and and just tore the front right up a little bit. Bell would lead on the restart, he would lead off pit road. Caution for the 60 of time Majeski. And while that happened, we had some big damage with uh, some of the leaders. The seven and the 42 made some contact there, and the seven his day would end up being. You know, pretty much done. He would be all right, though. He was, managed to battle his way back in the top 10, but uh, just didn't work out because uh, 
We saw his brakes just starting to literally be on fire. Yeah, he's really burning up the track trying to get back up in the lead, but uh, unfortunately the brakes give out. Yeah. Awkward, weird restart. Everyone just went straight to the bottom. Uh, the racetrack's way up here. Everybody's way down here. And, uh, you know, I'm surprised that no crashes came from that. Uh, but Christopher Bell would still be leading. Uh, caution for Tommy Joe Martins as he would blow up. Uh, then we'd have Christopher Bell versus Hemrick on the restart. But just, you know, starting off, especially coming off that corner, uh, nothing that anyone else can do for the leader. While Justin Algar, his brakes, you know, that's when his brakes started going on fire. And nothing anyone can do for Christopher Bell. Bell would end up just cruising to the finish. Yeah, Hemrick is about almost two seconds back. So. Yeah, nothing Hemrick could do. Nothing anyone can do. They all hoped for a caution, but it just didn't happen. And with that, Christopher Bell was in a must-win situation. Now he, he won, so he is in Homestead to battle for a championship next week at Miami. Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know, with this inspection stuff going on, that cars can't get through the tech. And, you know, I think the obvious differ fines if you can't get through tech. You know, if you can't pass three, four times, I think you got to start five laps down. Yeah, because it just seemed like that car had such an, such an advantage on the field, nothing anyone could do. And it really didn't matter where he started at all. Uh, and, you know, inspection or, or not, he would have won the race either way. Yeah, because a lot of times, like, like ones don't really pass tech three or four times. They're starting to back, and then they race the way to the front. It seems like they just got a little bit of advantage if, if you put, like, stiffer penalties. Like, you start on a couple of laps down, they, they'll probably get a little better at getting through tech. Yeah, and, you know, we saw that with Truex and qualifying. Couldn't pass tech, and now he's... He still got out to qualify, but he is starting 13th. Uh, we might it's see. Like, it's like two, three weeks in a row. It's just like certain, the same cars you can't get through tech. Yeah, so uh, NASCAR did say that they were going to be more stricter next year. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but now we'll talk about Homestead. Now Christopher Bell is in. I think that is one thing everyone did not want to happen. They didn't want him to be in this battle. Uh, you know, because he has dominated all year. Miami's a mile and a half. It's not quite like any other mile and a half. But, you know, any mile and a half this year, Christopher Bell has been your guy. And, you know, Kentucky, Texas, Charlotte, everywhere he's been top dog in, in every, every one of those tracks. Yeah. Um, the Just Nalgar and you know, Christopher Bell, I think they're the top two. And now with Algar out, you know, it benefits Christopher Bell. He, it seemed like he would, he would try to stay, try harder to keep them two out of the playoffs. But let's also remember Bell had issues at Texas. Homestead is a one race thing. It's not like a, you know, like a three race thing. or It's not like a normal playoff system now. It's just one race. If something were to happen to Bell, you know, like at Texas and Kansas, he may not win the championship. And Custer, he's he's real good homestead too. I believe really realistically, Cole Custer is the favorite going into this because Christopher Bell, I don't believe, has raced at Homestead in these cars. Raced there in the truck, but the trucks are much different than these cars. Uh, then, you know, Cole Custer is heading into this with so much confidence. He knows, like, last year, he dominated the field, like, won by over 10 seconds, I believe. And if he can bring that car back and dominate the same way he did, this championship will easily go to Cole Custer. Yeah, there's one junior motorsports car in there. And you think it would be Algar, but no, it's uh, Tyler Reddick. Yeah, Algar has dominated this year, won five races, but it goes that spot goes to his teammate Tyler Reddick, who just had a amazing round while everyone else had a lackluster round with first lap crashes and issues. It looked to be like a easy easily cruise for Christopher Bell and Algaier, but with those issues, 
Bell had to work for it, and Algar didn't make it. Yeah, they had two or three races in a row, just, you know, just didn't have any good luck. Now Tyler Reddick, you know, he hasn't won since Daytona. The very first race of the season, which was a restrictor play anyway. Uh, he came close to winning at Texas, so I guess he can use that as momentum for this. But, you know, he seems to be like the, what I would say, the dark horse of this championship. If he can win, then that would be the greatest story of the season. And then look at Daniel Hemrick. Uh, you know, how, how awesome it would be. Family gets his very first win at Homestead and win a championship in both. Yeah, and you know the way that this playoff format is, he could win the championship without winning the race, and you know saw so William Byron do that last year, and if he doesn't win the race, he would have won a championship without winning a race in his entire career. Yeah, so, and since he's going to the Cup Series next year, and uh, it'd be really great to see him win. Uh, before he leaves the Xfinity Series. So we may see Daniel Hemrick do a backflip at Homestead. He was really great there last year. Uh, was leading the championship four until he had some battery issues on his car. And that's one thing that can happen. If your car just craps out at Homestead, you're out of the championship. There's nothing you can do. You fought so hard all until your car just gave out. Yeah, it's kind of where the playoffs has been. You don't want to be leading the points because it's like all kinds of stuff goes on so uh, it's it's been a tough battle in, in the playoffs here yeah any one of these guys could realistically win the championship I think Cole Custer has the the history of this racetrack I believe he is the favorite if not Christopher Bell is the favorite because his you know dominance at mile and a half this year if he could show show up at at Homestead, he maybe could show Cole Custer uh, some competition there with dominating at Miami. Yeah, it's re- very unfortunate for Ayla Sauer not to be going for the championship uh, since he's leaving after the season. So yeah, that is our rundown. It is now time to make our final picks for the 2018 season for the Xfinity Series to win it all. Hmm. <laughs> it's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, well, I won't. I won't go with Daniel Hammer. I believe he's gonna get his first win and his first championship. And uh, I just think he's got some good speed, and uh, really depends on how Bell races. And uh, I'll just watch out for Daniel Hammer. And as for me, I'm going for Christopher Bell because you know it's an easy pick. Uh, he has. He has, he's the most winningest driver this year, and I think also the most winningest in Xfinity Series history. I just think uh, the experience from the Dirt Series and, and all that, I think uh, it will play to his advantage in Homestead. But, it, you know, don't don't count out the 9 and the, tw- uh, well, the 9 and the double zero, zero of Cole Cut. Uh, I was got so mixed up I was about to say William Byron I'm like <laughs> it's not 2017 come back to this year <laughs> William Byron is going to be your 2018 Xfinity Series champion calling it he's just going to come out of nowhere <laughs> the nine will win the race park in victory lane it's not Tyler Reddick it's William Byron <laughs> <laughs> and, but yeah that was our uh, podcast for this week at, at the end of the podcast Next week, go on our Twitter, at SideDraft. We'll be having a vote for your favorite Xfinity Series thumbnail of this season. It's been a wild ride, and we can't wait to close this one out. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of Christopher Bell thumbnails. A lot of them, yeah. <laughs> a lot of Bell and Algar. So, yeah. You know, we may see uh, uh, the champion win the thumbnail vote. So, <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>